Previously on the Great Ace Attorney. The cost of keeping a line fed dealt a devastating blow to your household finance. <laughs> but who would have thought domesticating a bloodthirsty wild lion would be so f***ing hard <laughs> and expensive? Actually, I had to start running out of food, so I just started to start feeding my neighbors. <laughs> oh, God. Uh! Get in there, Larry. My lion's hungry. No, dude. No. Also, I just want to kill you, so just f***ing get in there. Ah! Now back to grunting at people. Hey! Snigopi, back with some more of the Great Ace Attorney. When we last left off, we complete our investigation, and this is already off to a really interesting start. I'm, I'm liking the setup here. So our client uh, was witnessed running away from the crime scene by, I think, two people, right? I think they said they have two witnesses. But we haven't been able to talk to them at all or see who they are. I'm gonna bet they're probably the two guys we ran into at the end, the, the guy who was dressed like a like a jester, basically, and then the grumpy old dude. Um, we also did investigate the uh, the old man and uh, his maid, who ended up being his wife, and seemingly has no relation to the case. But I'm sure it will. We don't we don't do that. We don't just have some random non sequiturs unless they're goofy jokes. But I really liked the uh, the sort of revelation that uh, Naruhodo came to because after his whole de ordeal with Magundo, right, who ended up sort of tricking him. He, he sort of lost faith in himself and his client, and he felt like, you know, is there any reason for me to be doing this? Can I really trust my client at all? Holmes helped him reach the conclusion they just need to believe in himself, and that's the that's the motive. That's that's the reason you need to, to, to continue to do this. And I think it's really cool. I think that's really a unique way of putting the, you know, trust in your client no matter what that uh, Ace Attorney has spouted like a million times before in the past. You know, that's been pretty much their go-to since the start, you know? And I, I like that. I like that that's different, and it's it still sort of goes by that same line of reasoning, but instead it's it's really in yourself, you know? And that can, that doesn't just uh, mean believing in just your client, but also, you know, believing in your own investigation, believing in the uh, the evidence that you're uncovering, your own reasoning. I mean, it, it goes, it ties to so many other things that isn't just that. And I think it's a better lesson to, uh, to learn here. But uh, anyway, last episode, uh, Nebular said, Man, I just realized, Iris Watson really changes the meaning of Holmes's catchphrase, ELEMENTARY, MY DEAR WATSON! <laughs> oh my god, I saw that and I was like, this motherfucker is absolutely gonna be the comment of the day! <laughs> that was just too fucking clever. Oh my god, yes. Cause Iris is 10 years old, she should be an elementary schooler. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's so fucking funny, man. It's funny, he hasn't actually said that yet, though, has he? I, I don't I don't think he has in the game. He said indubitably a lot, but I don't know if he's actually said uh, elementary at any point. Man, he's gonna wait for the end of the game. He's gonna just whip it out real hard, and it's gonna hit us right in the fucking gut. We're like, oh yeah! Elementary, my dear, our hood out! Ah! <laughs> We're like, oh my god! Fucking hair blows back when he says it. I'm like, ah! <laughs> anyway, Nebular, your hilariously clever comment is the reason why you are our comment of the day. But all right, guys, we're finally hopping in to the trial, and uh, I'll be curious to see uh, where it goes from here. I'll actually be curious to see, too, are we going to get different jurors this time? I mean, if we're going off the rules of, you know, the American court system, and uh, I guess most probably court systems have jurors, that would be different, um, <laughs> which then means I'm going to have to come up with some new voices for them, which... No, no, <laughs> never mind, go back to the old people. And we're going to be facing off against Beric Von Zeek. So, oh my god, yes, can't fucking wait. So, all right, guys, let's get started. February 20th, 923 AM, old belly defendant lobby. I can't believe it. I'm already back in this courthouse. And there's McGundle's rotting, charred body over there. They never bothered to clean it up. We came here as exchange students to learn the legal system in this country. As such, we must stand in court to advance our studies. Yeah, you're right about that, but... This is a once-in-a-lifetime moment for the defendant. I could decide his entire fate. I can't bring myself to call it just another day of study. You do have a point. Uh, good morning to you both. Uh, it's gotta be, uh, oh. Oh, it's you. <laughs> that was gonna be Holmes. It's not way too excited. Oh, good morning, Suseki. Your eyes look completely bloodshot. Yeah, they do. There's a saying in my, my land: uh, the early to rise uh, gains small benefit. Yeah, I, I've heard that. After all, I'm Japanese. So if waking up early earns me a little extra, then uh, should I not sleep for even an instant? <laughs> it's just one night the benefit could add up to a single penny. 
That is why you, you see me here in such a drowsy state. So you think a not guilty verdict is only worth a penny? <laughs> Oh, you don't even have handcuffs on you, man. Nobody's like, nobody's stopping you. Just run out that door and just book it at the fuck up. Wish you luck. Best of luck today, Seki. <gasps> run, man. You're screwed. <laughs> but my divinely decreed destiny is a perturbed, fleeting life. I uh, eagerly entrusted to you. How nervous I am. I still don't understand him, but the part about being nervous definitely shines through. I'm glad you were scared! <laughs> oh my god, I was getting ready to fucking dry up the air there. He's like, ah, so very glad! In any case, substitute law student, Naruto. Yes? What is it? J just a moment ago, I, I was able to catch a glimpse of this courtroom's gallery. There are as many people present as there would be on the opening day of a great theater. Is the pending judgment really so popular with the London public? Th there were that many people? I didn't know that. Oh man. Do you happen to know why, Suzuto? I can't really say that I do. But her face tells me otherwise. D -d Please do not hide the truth from me! C could it possibly be? B because of the D -D Grim Reaper? Prosecutor Van Zeeks and his sexy ass f everything. Is that why, Suzuto? I went out and bought all of today's newspapers. And indeed, Prosecutor Van Zeeks was on the front page of every single one. He, he was right. After hearing the Grotello Grim Reaper, for a number of years he avoided the courts. Right, Inspector Gregson said the same thing yesterday. The trial two days ago was his revival after so many years. It was re revival after so many years. Oh, fine case against Carlson Magundo. Caused him a greater uproar within London than cut today's coming trial. We had no idea. Why just having arrived in London? And why has he decided to prosecute such a trivial case only two days later? Each newspaper is spreading their own speculation. T -t trivial T -t to me, this is the most important thing since the Foundation Japan! My apologies. It's the newspapers that keep saying it. Well, I, I suppose this will further fuel the blaze of international tensions. Though, it's odd that this prosecutor is suddenly awakened from his long slumber. Like Vincent. There is one more similarity between the two trials he has, he has prosecuted. Indeed. I feel the same way. Of course. That would be you, substitute law student Naruto. Me? I guess it does make sense. That's what I was thinking too, man. Just because he's doing it, and he became intrigued by Naruto. In the two trials of the newly revived Grim Reaper, one attorney stands against him. Fear me. It almost feels as though... You two might be good friends! D don't be ridiculous! I don't make friends with bringers of death! <laughs> That's true, then there's one possibility. You have incredibly, hopelessly, irredeemably poor luck. <laughs> That's a little dramatic. Oh, defended by an attorney with such dreadful luck! Where's my life come to? So predictable misfortune, surely! Or monumental! The foundation of bad! <laughs> Okay, you stop making comparisons to the Foundation of Japan, alright? Because I don't know if that's entirely true! But, you're the one who entrusted me with your fate, Suseki, so that's technically your fault. <laughs> I'm just a student with no luck, experience, or real ability, and I'm probably gonna fail today, and you're gonna die a painful death, but that's not gonna stop me from trying. Yeah! Yeah? Nobody else? No? I, I am, am so, so screwed. screwed. And I've only just arrived in London, but even so. I prepare to believe in you and to fight with all I have in me till the bitter end. D oh, substitute law student Narahodo. You're not loaded in London anymore. Whatever may come, we stand beside you. Uh, oh, there goes Sister Susado. <laughs> Did they die? Suzuki, humbly request respectfully. Please find our defendant, attorney. Get your scrawny ass in here. Call is about to begin. Make way to the courtroom at once. Okay, British Larry, thanks. Looks like it's time. Let's go, Suseki. Yes, sir! Now, when he does that expression, his teeth look like they're just coming out of his fucking face. Like, ah! It's finally about to begin. Tribe life, trial of death, sipsy life, sipsy death, treachery life, treachery death! What a bugger, bugger, no, who are Oh, God, I, I, don't, I don't know whatever came me there. I was just. I just felt like I was harnessing the power of a hoge for just a second. My second time seeing it in a British court and my second time facing 
the Grim Reaper. Watch over me. Sagging! This time, I'm ready to believe in my client through and through. And I'll follow what you, you taught me as well. I'll believe in my own skill. As an attorney, as I fight on. Good luck, Naruhodo. You're totally screwed. Oh. So says the Soki Ghost. February 20th, 10 a.m., Old Bailey Crown Court. Oh my god, I recognize a motherfucker up on that juror stand. Are you telling me? What are the odds of that happening? Are there just not that many people in your fucking land that you somehow managed to get the guy who was a freaking witness of the last case as one of the jurors? The guy on the far left, he's back again. Oh god. Oh, yeah, the other ones I think were new though. That's guy that guy's gonna have a bone to pick with me, isn't he? In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, we declare this court is now in session. I ask you, prosecution and defense, have you fully prepared your cases? <laughs> I am the knight. That doesn't answer my qu the prosecution is ready. The defense is ready! The creatures known as Japanese truly are fascinating. Why do you say that? I heard about you from Lord Vortex himself. Two days ago, a pair of Greenhorn exchange students had just arrived in London. What of it? You wish to save the defendant, who happens to be your countryman. Typical Japanese hubris. I apologize for interrupting, but I don't consider that hubris. Suzuto. As I recall, our last trial ended with a not guilty verdict. And how well did that end for him? <laughs> so it was. And what a decadent verdict it was. Yet, much to your church chagrin. After the trial ended, the defendant met his own untimely demise, yes. Way to rub it in, man. Yeah, it's totally that dude. The other guys are all new, though. Very well. It appears the trial is safe to proceed. Sensible citizens chosen by the cap capital city. Are you all prepared? As a gentleman, should I fail to fight for justice today? It should be my life on the line tomorrow. What the heck? Come on, dude. What? How are you doing? Are you doing up there? You know, I can be a lot meaner than I look. Ooh. Uh, okay, then. Kind of basic looking guy. Yes, as you can plainly see, I am a mild-mannered young man. <gasps> what the hell are you doing there now? Honestly, the mustachioed man seems the type that liable to do just about anything. What the hell? How are you? Okay, seriously, there's what are there like ten people in this entire fucking city? Let's get a start already. He's gotta be guilty of something. And then we got an old man. Ah, what was that? I came. Hey, well. Seems like we're just going with having at least one old person at every one of these juries. Very well then, with that we shall begin the trial post haste. Lord Van Zeeks, your opening statement if you please. Mere days ago, our great empire forged an alliance with an island nation in the far east. The defendant is a visitor from that very nation. Suseki Natsumi is his name. Hmm, a good year. We welcome this exchange student to our empire with open arms. And yet, to our shame, that very student has committed the most heinous crime within our capital. Ah! He stabbed a poor innocent woman on the street using a knife! Ah! No! Forgive me for selling the fucking holy grail of blah blah blah! Pardon the world! I dare say stabbing someone with a knife is as low as you can go! Guilty! Boop! Look! That yellow face! His tiny stature! That's definitely a Jap! God damn! The fucking casual racism in this fucking game. I don't even care what you do. Just bring this thing to a close. Ready, set, go. Well, well, what do you say? I can't hear you so well. Behold, how insolent of me to let the Holy Grail lose at the trial's onset. <coughs> I plead your forgiveness. I plead it. At this time, I wish to summon our first witness to the court. Very well. Call forth the inspector responsible for leading the investigation of the crime scene. Oh lord, here he comes. Hey all, here with my fish and chips. Witness, your name and occupation. Yes, sir. 
My name is Tobias Gregson. I'm an inspector at Scotland Yard. Go on, inspector. Please describe the events of this case for us. Okay, there's the person I got stabbed. I see their face. We believe the victim is a 20 year old woman named v v Verde and Green. <coughs> hold on, hold on. What do you mean by believe? All we know is that the victim was stabbed in the back with a knife. Three days have passed since the incident, but she still hasn't regained consciousness. What? That's crazy. So she's unconscious, but she is at least in stable condition. Fortunately for him, this Japanese student has just narrowly avoided a murder charge. Inspector Gregson, I implore you to explain the incident in more detail. Yes, sir. Everyone, have a look at this map of this journal. Journal vicinity of the vicinity of the scene. The incident occurred three days ago, around five o'clock in the evening. The scene itself was pavement along the side of a wide alley for coaches on Briar Road. The victim, Miss Green, was walking along the pavement where snow had just stopped falling. But then, the defendant sneak, sneaked up behind her and plunged the knife in, into her back. Fortunately, she managed to cling to her life. She is currently admitted to a local clinic. But so long as she remains unconscious, we are not able to request testimony from her. These are the victim's files. Very well. The court accepts them as evidence. Okay, so the back of the knife. Girl remains unconscious. Okay, let's have a little look-see then. I got Okay, a uh, portly woman in her early 20s, uh, unidentified but likely Viridian Green. Okay, that's, that's, that, that seems like if it's unidentified but likely this person, that makes me think it's going to play into something, right? Status, critical condition due to deep stab wound, location eastern footpath of Briar Road, reported by Rola O'Malley. Okay, that was probably, that was probably the big angry guy, right? The angry guy we saw before. It seems like a name that would fit with him pretty well. I don't think we got his name. And what of the weapon? So, I have it right here. It's found in the victim's back. That's one huge knife. I sure be hate to be stabbed by that thing. Such a heavy looking knife, even a weaker person could stab someone with ease. In other words, even a whip like Saseki could have done it. Hmm, that's quite a plain looking knife. Very well, we'll also accept the knife as evidence. Okay. Featureless knife. Let's go ahead and have a little examine of it. Woo! Okay, you can see a little bit of. I think it's a little bit of blood there. Oh, is the tip broken? Oh, Narahoto, take a look at the tip of the knife. It appears to have been chipped slightly. Whoa, you're right. Good eye, Suzuto. Where could the tip have gone? It's a good question. It's a guess, but. It might still be stuck in the victim's wound. Ugh. Ugh. That sounds quite painful. Hmm. Okay. I guess that's it. So, what was the culprit's motive? Surely he meant to take her valuables. Judging by the items on her person, the victim was but a poor student. I surmise that she wouldn't have had any valuables worth stealing in the first place. In that case, perhaps the perpetrator held some deep resentment towards the victim. We still do not know. The exchange student seldom goes outside, save to visit the used bookshop. At present, we have yet to find any link between the victim and the defendant. Hi! Hi, I, I want to say something! If it wasn't a robbery, and he has no known grudge against her, then Seki would have no reason to stab Viridian. And yet, you still arrested him? Does that seem a bit too rash? Gideyani. <laughs> Oh my god! This guy's the fucking best! Just, just, just so notch all, like, grabs him with the tips of the fingers and just chucks the fuck behind him. You know what? Fuck this one. It's a horrible year. Ha! But you just said it was a good- Shut up! I know I didn't! How impudent of me to cast my freshly opened bottle into the gallery. I plead your forgiveness! <laughs> right- Ow! Oh, fuck! Right into British Larry! Damn you, Bear Van Zeeks! Ah! However... It is your own words that should be called rash. Huh? Naturally, Scotland Yard would not rest a man without just cause. Inspector Gregson, I order you to testify. 
explain to us exactly why the police arrested that man. As you wish. Here I go. With my me fish and chips. All right, what do you got? Why were we arrested a second? It was around 5 p.m. when the incident occurred. That day, fog was unusually thin. The crime scene was an open area with high visibility. Nobody else was present. The victim fell to the ground after she was stabbed in the back. The culprit made a run for it, but as he fled the scene, he dropped the items he was carrying. The items in question were old books. Seems he was on his way from a used bookshop. We identified the defendant as the owner of the books and arrested him. Okay. Old books, you say? There's a photograph that was taken by the police shortly after the crime was committed. Ow! Indeed, there appears to be books scattered around the victim's body. Police submit this photograph to the court so it can be admitted as evidence. Okay, a large pocket knife is stabbed in the victim's back. Ow! Okay, let's have another look at that. Seems like with pictures, I don't really, I don't really get any additional things I can examine. But a second, like read what these books say. I'm not surprised that the Japanese are all utter cowards. Even in the face of such damning evidence, you still deny everything. Good lord, man. <laughs> Seriously, the, um, the amount of casual racism in this game is rather disturbing. Well... Now, the defendant isn't exactly denying everything. Suzuto? What do you mean by that? Suseki has acknowledged that he's connected to this case in one way. Isn't that right, Narahodo? Now she mentions it. Yesterday, when we asked him about, about it at the, at the jail. There was one other individual walking in front of me along that cursed road. She was wearing a green overcoat. When I was about to pass her, it happened. She suddenly let out a short cry and then collapsed onto the cold ground. Terrified, I, I seized the first opportunity to flee from the cursed scene. At full speed, mind you, back to my cursed flat. A green coat. That has to be it. The victim was wearing a green coat. Mm, my word, this is the first time I've ever seen this full color photo. Mm. Am, I, am I, by the way, not even going to comment that you're up there, lady, and the other guy's up there? Like, seriously, what are the odds that? How do you screen these people? Ha! Ah! The defendant confirms that he fled the scene of the crime. However, that doesn't mean that he stabbed green. That's just an absurd conclusion. At the time, the accused and the victim were the only ones walking on that pavement. Which is to say, nobody else was able to stab the victim. Is the accused himself not admitting to this very fact? Gah! It seems the course of this trial will be heavily influenced by this next cross-examination. Bearing that in mind, the defense will now proceed with caution in its cross-examination. Yes, my lord. I have no other choice. Cross examination will turn the whole situation on. Oh, let's it around. I'm sure of it. All right, I think I probably got to press them. That's usually what you do with a lot of these investigator guys. So let's go ahead and just press them for more info. All right, so around 5 p.m. when the incident occurred, that day the fog was usually was uh, unusually thin. Mata! Mata! The fog was unusually thin. By that, I mean that one could actually make out the other side of the street. That doesn't sound very thin. It sure is for this city, but I suppose Japanese wouldn't really know that. I've read in books that London is known as the Old Smoke. In Japan, it's rumored to be a beautiful sight. Huh, poppycock. See, to us, it ain't, ain't so romantic. D I, I see. At this time of year, all that fog causes endless problems. And all especially foggy days. It's so bad that you can't even see your own hand in front of your face. Just the other day, I couldn't even see a coach until I got kicked by the horse. <laughs> oh my god! Oh man, are you alive? <laughs> oh shit! Ran him the fuck over. That's pretty bad. However, on the day in question, it seems that bloody fog finally managed to clear up a bit. Much to the chagrin of any potential criminal, I'm sure. Okay. 
The crime scene was an open area with high visibility. Nobody else is present. How can he be so sure? It's simple. The witness said it himself. That's right. Inspector Gregson mentioned that yesterday, didn't he? Right. I believe the witness was an officer of Scotland Yard. You got it. Uh, oh, God, I lost my powers. Maybe should we ask that witness to testify? The witness will be summoned, should the need arise anyway. But, but since it's winter, I'm almost certain that the air should have already been dark by 5 o'clock. Regardless of how thin the fog was, who knows if a person would be visible in the dark? Perhaps your tiny, distant island nation hasn't discovered the wonders of artificial light yet. But all the roads in the great capital city of London are equipped with gas lamps. Oh! The prosecution believes these lamps provided adequate lighting for them to witness the crime. A city which dispels the darkness of man's past. Indeed, such as our, our very own city of London. Yeah, you guys are whatever, great. It's basically in order to get the tip witness to testify. I'll have to get through the cross-examination first. And with the defense's silence, you may continue with your testimony, Inspector. Okay, not really getting any new stuff here. Vega fell to the ground if she was stabbed in the back. The she was stabbed in the back? Yep. You can see it playing as day in this here photograph. I don't know, man. I mean, it could be she just had a really hard shell. She had a turtle shell on her back. Or it could be one of those fake knives. It just kind of slides in after you stab somebody. Yes, yeah, so there doesn't need to be a appear to be a knife sticking out of her back. And the victim, Miss Green, is still unconscious. Correct. At present, she's recovered in St. Bartholomew's Hospital. We're hoping she'd wake up for the trial. If only we could ask her directly, she might be able to tell us who the per perpetrator was. It seems your client is a lucky man. Uh, ha! Oh man, what the heck? On the contrary, the fence believes him to be, in fact, incredibly unlucky! Your false bravado is meaningless if you can't even stop your ears from darting around. Or your eyes! Ah! Uh, oh, my ears are darting around too! <laughs> Like a little sound like this. Oh, God. You are very twitching. Even the hairs on your head are twitching. Oh, my God. Ah! Am I some kind of Cthulhu monster? All right. The culprit made a run for it, but as he fled the scene, he dropped the items he was carrying. What items would those be? Those are also present in the photograph. You must be referring to those three used books, I presume. Yes, fortunately their time in the snow has left them damaged beyond salvage. Ow. It would be easy to carry such a small number of books under one arm as he walked. So it stands to reason that he would have been able to wield a knife in his other hand. The prosecutor isn't pulling any punches. Huh? The argument that he held books in both hands is no longer no longer holds water. Now our escape route has been obstructed. I'm loath to admit that he is at least cunning. So the culprit committed the crime while he was carrying those items. Yes, so be, so see. Okay, the items in question were old books. It seems he was on his way back from his bookshop. What the? You said the defendant had a routine of visiting the used bookshop every day, right? That's correct. Seems the bookshop primarily collected old books of British literature. I must express my respect toward the accused's keen fascination with our own classical literature. You're not wrong there. The Venice Fusion was dem dem well near overflowing with old books. Could you tell us a little more about that used bookshop? Oh, fuff. Fine. Take another look at this map of this area around the sea. The closest used bookshop to the Venice flat would be the Ragged Reader. Small bookshop on the corner of Briar Mi Mission. By the way, the defendant's flat happens to be on the opposite side of the Briar Road. After he bought the used books, the route the defendant took back to his flat would have been this one. Okay. There we go. I guess there's some new information. 
Undoubtedly, if he took his route back to his flat from the used bookshop, then he most certainly would have passed by the crime scene. Narahodo, the inspector's testimony just now was incredibly important. Yeah, I agree. The most important part of this testimony is location of the bookshop, the name of the bookshop, the bookshop selection. Yeah, because that's not the receipt. That's not what the receipt says. It's Tattered Tales, so it's the name of the shop. Inspector Gretzen, can I make a request? I don't know. Can you? <laughs> well, excuse me. Uh, well, uh, would you please add the name of the used bookshop to your testimony? I have a feeling this could be extremely important information. You have a feeling? Uh, oh, no. I, I mean, it, it might be a vital clue. Very well. Although I don't see the importance myself. Witness, we request you amend your testimony to include the name of the used bookshop. Huh, with pleasure. Doesn't sound too pleased to me. To me. Okay, I did actually tell you guys tell me apparently there I do possibly get some extra funny bonus dialogue, or I don't know if it's funny, just some bonus Easter egg dialogue. If I actually managed to push everything in this guy first guy's testimony, so uh I, I guess press this and then press the file thing as well, so. The Ragged Reader. Are you sure it's the name of the used bookshop? Yep. It's the nearest used bookshop to the defendant's flat. When the defendant was making his way back to his flat from the Ragged Reader, he most certainly would have passed through the crime seat. I think we should clear something up. On the day of the crime, did the defendant really go to the Ragged Reader? To tell the truth, we aren't sure. You aren't sure? Why is that? Well, you see, the shopkeeper left to, left to replenish the stock the morning after the incident occurred. We just haven't been able to ask if the defendant went there on the day of the crime. Then, what did the defendant himself say about it? He claims that he doesn't remember. Uh, huh? The defendant's own de de deposition states, I don't remember. D oh, great. Defendant often finds himself wandering aimlessly around town, lost in thought, so he doesn't quite remember which used bookshop he meandered into. Hmm, this defendant certainly does seem like a scatty fellow. Scatty? Scatty dog! It looks like it's all coming together. Arahodo? Inspector Gregson, continue with your testimony. Okay, now let's go ahead and just press this last one. Um, we identify the defendant as the owner of the books and arrest him. Or maybe it's to get some additional information. I don't know. From, like, you guys told me to press this guy, though, all the way to the end. If I recall, investigation was requested by Detective Holmes, right? Don't be ridiculous. B huh? That meddling bloke is always sticking his nose where it doesn't belong. But, but, Mr. Holmes said he came to the crime scene with the rest of the detectives. That wasn't official. They were acting out of order. Ah! I'm always telling them, and as it goes down, contact Central. And then just do as Central says. Don't do anything unnecessary. Oh. If you only get info about a case of that goon next month, they'll have a whole book about it. Here's them on the scene without me knowing, and steal all the glory from the rest of us. Ha! Good work for an amateur detective! Ka! The call of it! Inspector, if that man is such a thorn in the yard's side, then perhaps I could take care of your little problem. Mean put him on put him on trial and then have him die afterwards? Shut Inspector Gregson down fast. Considering he's known as the Reaper, he could probably end someone's life with a few words. <laughs> Dead. Anyway, the Chinese Japanese even in, even admitted it. He's the one who bought all the books that ended up scattered around the crime scene. Hmm. Are you ready, Naruto? If you can't change the jurors' minds during this cross-examination, then Suseki will almost certainly be found guilty. That means. I have to find a size of contradiction in this inspector's testimony no matter what it takes. Okay, maybe you guys just want me to get, like, some additional info. Like, that was actually nice to hear, to hear the, uh... <laughs> that line about, uh, Sherlock and just how much he dislikes him. How much he, he told the other guys to not talk, 
talk with him about it. Uh, all right. So show the receipt. Are you sure? It's not Tattered Tales? Hickey got it. Hickey got it. Um, hold it, Inspector Gregson. What is it? I'm busy, you know. It's about a receipt we found in Saseki's room. The receipt's from a used bookshop. It was printed on the day of the crime, and it notes that he purchased three books. You found this in the defendant's room. The problem is the name of the used bookshop. What is the meaning of this? Ah! Oh, I got my powers back. It says that it was printed at a shop called Tattertail's Book Emporium. Tattertail's? While it is true that Saseki purchased used books on that day of the crime, he did not visit the Ragged Reader! Uh, uh, what on earth? Inspector Gregson, tell us more about this Tattered Tales book emporium. D sir, uh, as it turns out, there's one more used book shop near the Ragged Reader. But you see, it's such a small shop that we didn't think the vendor would go anywhere near it. He got it! But in reality, he did! And this receipt proves it! Higiari, and what is the point of this? No matter where he purchased his decrepit, moldy tomes, the conclusion remains constant. What are you talking about? Surely, uh, this changes everything? Naruhodo, here's a map. D uh, oh, thank you. Um, right, look right here. The defendant had shopped to the Ragged Reader. That, yes, he would have passed through the crime scene on his way home. But, but! I've, he had been at Tattered Tales instead. There's possible he didn't walk that way. Yeah, is that so? Well, depending on where that used bookshop is, maybe. Is this true, Mr. Attorney? Yes, though right now it's only a possibility. And of course, we're going to find the shop is probably in that same area anyway. Inspector, where is the Tattered Tales Book Emporium? Well, you, you see, uh, let me take a look. Tattered Tales will be right around here, on the east corner of this block. Uh, okay, that's, yeah. Doesn't really change anything that much, does it? Well, how about that? Uh, as you can clearly see... E oh. <laughs> uh... Time to pour me a glass of brandy. It would seem that our exchange student is more of a clown than we once thought. You never fail to make me laugh. <laughs> but you're not laughing. I'm laughing on the inside. And he says that without the slice turns of a smile on his face. I think if he smiled, I'd probably just die inside. Well, I probably don't have to say this. But even if the defendant was at the Town of Tales. He would have to definitely pass through the crime scene anyway. I'd be surprised they didn't even figure that shit out themselves, though. Like, come on, guys. That shit wasn't hard to find. I just walked in the room. It was there. Indeed, as we can clearly see. Ah. Hmm. I'll say it once more for you, Japanese exchange student. Mm, ow! No matter where he purchased his decrepit, moldy tomes, the conclusion remains constant. I knew it all along, and you thought you could fool us. I already don't said it. We got enough proof. Yeah, uh, it's all right. Good, I get you to repeat that. Naruhodo, what's the time to stand firm? Susano, keep quiet and let the prosecution's assertion become accepted as fact. The jurors may all end up make up their minds based on that. Uh, oh, she's right. She carefully rethink the prosecution's claim. On the way back from Tower Tales, Woody have to, had to go through the had to go through the crime scene. Uh, I mean, it's possible he could have gone through the, this path here, but well, the the murder took. I guess he could have gone around the long way. There is a fatal flaw in the prosecution's argument. He could have gone the other way around, I guess, maybe. Took the long way home. I mean, is, is it about an equal distance away from going the other direction? 
Uh, I don't know. It's it's kind of close. I think the other way is pro like coming around the the left side, like they were saying, is still the fastest way to get there. Explain yourself, defense. Uh, oh, that's it. My, my answer is uh, right here. When he was on his way home for the tattered tales. If you were to take this route, he'd cross through the crime scene. But roads often branch off. Yeah. If you continue walking along this route, look! Ah! He would have been able to reach his flat without ever crossing the crime scene. You hear Trying to argue with a poor clown's rubbish musing is boorish at best, but it is my duty. Most people would call that a very roundabout way of walking home. Ah! Remember that we're in the dead of winter. Why would one choose such a long detour? Well, you see... The answer couldn't be any more obvious. You wouldn't take the long road home. Hmm. Our criminal took the simple route home, and his knife took the simple way into her back. But, but you have to understand... Because, um... No, oh, I got it now! How could you accuse him of that when you haven't even asked him? If that's your answer, then I'm sure you must have asked him already. And his answer, I'm sure, was simply, I don't remember. Ah. The defendant said he always, he's always wandering aimlessly through the city, lost in thought. He claims that he was wandering home as, as always, so he doesn't remember clearly. Ah, oh, damn it, Suseki. Come on. Give me something to work with! This is not going anywhere. Would anybody like some a taste of my holy grail and my holy juice? That's enough. I don't think we want or need any more aimless arguments in this court. What would your opinions be, wise citizens of the jury? But even if he did take that route... Yes, his attorney. If I could just... There it is. Oh my god almighty. Wow, okay, everybody hates me now. Regarding Laura Van Zeek's state statement just now, we six judges unanimously agree. What, already? This can't be happening. As of now, we have come to our one firm, unshakable conclusion. Very well, now six jurors are type. The time has come and so have I. You've made your deliberations. Present your verdict to the court. You say. Oh, oh, all voice. You say. 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 Boop, 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 boop. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's making a chug. Ah. So many fire graphics. Boom, dead. And it's over. Oh my, whoa, my god, I'm still chugging. Um, holy crap. Calm down, frame rate. Seems the jury has reached a unanimous conclusion. Still chugging a bit, isn't it? Holy mother god, it is. Uh, alright, let me, uh, let me go and save and start reloading. Just a little too hard on this freaking emulation. Yeah, oh my god, look at it. Uh, okay, are we better? That's a negatory. I'll give it a second, maybe it'll go away. Our sage citizen jurors and their brave resolve are the pride of the Great British Empire. Naruhodo. Ah, someone turned the flames off. They're, t they're lagging my game. I'm not done yet. This still isn't over. It's my final chance to persuade the, the jurors. <laughs> I say when my face is still on the table. I have to tip those huge skills. It's time for a grand turnabout. No matter what it takes, I have to do this. The fire in your your eyes tells tells me that you have yet to concede defeat. Ah! Uh. Don't tell me you plan to parade your rights around this courtroom again. Your so-called right, forgotten in some dark court moldy corner of the British legal code. No matter how much you complain about it, every attorney has the right to call for a closing argument. And I'm doing just that. Golly, what is up with the fucking lag? I 
feel like it's gotta be the flames, right? Like, all their flames are still sitting there or something? Then from this point forth, in accordance with the rights prescribed by our legal code, the closing arguments will now begin. Jurors, are you prepared? You should know the answer to that already, my lord. That dirt turn doesn't know when to give up. We all know that. Very well, then. Six jurors. State your reason and basis behind your guilty verdict. Come on. Okay, it's back to normal now. Let's take it past that. Alright, judicial findings. Oh, thank God. I was like, please don't let it stay that way the whole trial. The man's chap has already said it himself. A lady in a green coat just fell over. Who else but the victim could that be? There's no reason he would have taken such a long route home from the bookshop. Oh, my chubby cheeks! So basically, that guy just stabbed you right in the back. Oh, so scary. Look, I don't even care. Let's get this over with. I'm ready for the verdict. Dad, it is and boy, and book and poem is a great shot. The ragged reader, not so much. Okay, it's clear I'm going to have to start pressing them now. And as you guys said, sometimes you might have to press them multiple times, so, which I do appreciate that heads up. Hmm. With some small exceptions, the reasons behind their guilty verdicts are clear. <laughs> that old man doesn't know what's going on here, just like me. When the incident occurred, only the accused and the victim were present. Besides, the accused said it himself. He has admitted that he saw the fallen woman in the green coat. Furthermore, the defendant fled from the scene right after. It certainly sounds like enough basis for a guilty verdict to me. Even the judge agrees with their findings. Ah, uh, why did you have to run away from the scene as a sec, you idiot? Seriously, an invisible criminal? I mean, I can believe that. Okay, see if you can walk it a mile in my shoes. Arahoto, now's the time to cry over spilled milk. Now's not the time to cry over spilled ramen. There's only one way for you to continue this trial. Yeah, I know. You have to turn the verdict around. I need to convince, convince at least four jurors. Yes, that's correct. Let's try to be positive now. All right, here we go. Now, attorney, begin your closing argument. Yes, sir. Woo! I have to keep this trial moving no matter what. Stop at nothing. Ryunosuke Naruhoto! Alright, so we can figure this shit out. Defense is rebuttal. I like the way they do so. It's actually, if I do this, get up here and do like this, it makes it really easy to compare and contrast people. Merch Jap already said in himself, a leading green coach fell over who else but the victim could have done it. Okay, I think the uh, old man at the end might have something that might clash with the. It's the reason it would take such a long route home. Right, let's go ahead and press the old man here. Yeah, the dead book, Tim Boyman, a shop. The ragged reader, not so much. Mata! Mata! Yeah, I'm sorry, could you say it one more time? Oh, I said it was hold it. Do you often visit Tower Tales Book Emporium? I go there to browse old books, and then I read them at home while I sip old tea. Oh, 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 oh. That's my life. That day was no different. On the day of the incident, do you remember what time you went to the Tatter Tales? I was looking at books all afternoon. I left the shop a little before five o'clock. That's my life. That day was no different. Five o'clock in the afternoon. This is right when she was stabbed. Are you absolutely sure that you have the right time? Sure, sure. I remember it like it was three days ago. At any rate, I had a really tough time that day. What do you mean? An air footpath on Calabash Road was frozen over. The snow had only had stopped falling on the pavement. I smell fat smack on the ground. I was knocked out cold, and then I saw Holy Mother beckoning me. Uh, hold on a second. Did you say Calabash Road? Yep, my house saw a corn pipe. See? That narrow little footpath is the quickest way home from the town of Tales. Oh, here we go. Juror 6, that statement might be important. Change your judicial finding to the statement, please. Uh, uh, sorry, Sonny. Could you say it again? Just do the thing. Oh, I can't do the thing. So, so, okay, that evening I fell smack down Calabash Road. I conked out right there. I might need to press this guy again to really clarify that his statement. That was about 5 o'clock, right? That's the same time the incident occurred. I don't know anything about the incident, but that's when I always eat dinner at home. 
Just be safe. Could you remind me where you fell? It was all so very long ago. I'm not sure I remember. It was only three days ago. I'm sure you can imagine it. That narrow street was particularly slippery. Oh, that's it, I believe. I believe it's right around here. We slipped and fell on that icy path. You heard it all. Not a lot of people walk on Calabash Road. I was alone when I fell. I was alone when I lost consciousness. Look, I'm all alone, and I ceased. All alone. I'm probably going to die all alone. Head back to my nice warm home, where my grandkids wait for me. What a harsh environment you have to endure, had to endure. Why well, the older gentleman is okay now. Me too. I might have ended up with another in our hands. Dead. Oh, one more thing. Were you wearing that green coat on the day of the crime? Of course, it's the only coat I own. Coat was nice and dry this morning, so I decided to wear it to court. Oh, no, it's not that. It's not, okay, we're not going with the, that was the route home. We're saying that he could have been the one they mistook or something, right? Like, could, he could have been somebody else. You're right, say it's your lucky day, you kids. Oh! Maybe you're right. This could be our lucky break. I see, yeah, so what I'm saying here is that a lady in green coat just fell over. Who else could that be but the victim? Put it over here. There. It's not, the, it's not the route. It's the it's the coat that he's wearing. There's a clear contradiction between these two statements. What contradiction? Explain yourself. Excuse me, juror two and juror six. Oh, yes, what is it? Uh, man, I could really go for some good porridge right now. I don't think the elderly gentleman heard you. Seriously? I put everything I had into that shout. Anyway, one fact has become abundantly clear, as shown the receipt from the used bookshop. The defendant bought books from Tattered Tales and walked home from there. Didn't he say that he couldn't remember what, what road he took home that day? Yes, so it would seem. But on the way home, the defendant did see one person. A person wearing a green coat suddenly fell flat in the snow on the, the footpath. Right, and that person must have been the woman who was stabbed. <laughs> But is that really the right conclusion? Wow, we're lucky that the, that guy ended up being a juror over here. Although I suppose it could, could also have been a witness too. Is there a, so, some conflict of interest here? Like, shouldn't it be someone who's totally not associated with the? Uh, well, actually, I guess we could have said that for the last case too, because one of the guys was actually the the head of the carriage company that uh, that one guy died in. So whatever conflict of interest, we don't give a shit about that over here in London. What are you all about? Were you listening to what Juror Six, the old man over there, said? On the night of the incident, Viridian Green wasn't the only one. There was another person wearing a green coat who fell on the, p the pavement. Oh! You don't mean to imply. I do. That person was... Our hearing impaired sixth jerk! Then that means... The person in the green coat that defendants really saw... Was that jaunty old man in green? I would say it's highly probable. After all, that old man has a very similar body shape to the victim. Although his hair, the hair's blonde there, and his is not quite blonde. Oh. What in the world? But whatever. We're just going to gloss over that part. Yeah, what, what was that? Could you speak a little louder? <laughs> uh, change your, change your answer. Oh, okay. All you had to do was ask. Bonk. Anyway, what's important here is the location where the old man fell. Calabash Road. If the person who fell in front of the defendant was really that old man, and that would mean that Saseki must have taken the long way home. And there's one natural conclusion to come from that. There's no way that he could have passed through the scene of the crime. Eek! Oi, old man. What were you doing bubbling around a place like that? What's more, he just had to... He just had to be wearing that confusing green coat. What's the big deal? Are you saying old man like me can't bubble around town and slip off a few roads? You'd almost die a few times. And I can't dress myself up in the least trendy down my coat. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
Pardon me, my lord. I don't suppose you wish to revise your verdict? I do. I'm changing my verdict to not guilty. Juror two, yeah! But then I, I am too! Huh? I don't know what's going on, but fuck that guy! Fuck that Burry Banks fun doodle! He hit me in the face with his one bottle earlier, I just remembered it! I did ask for your forgiveness. But I'm not taking your forgiveness! And even it's just because I want to try turning the tables to him. <laughs> I just, I, I, I don't know, that's why I'm doing, I want to do this. Boom! Hopefully we don't lag the game this time. Oh! Whee! Alright, two down. Tin our Hoda, that was incredible. Your decision has to have changed. With that, the whole situation is turned about. Around. Yes, now all the jurors will have to reconsider their stances. It's extremely important that they really think about whether they feel their verdict's just. And one more thing. If there are more any more clues that can clear up the suspension around Saseki, then you can use this momentum to overturn the verdict. Right, I'll give it a try. Prosecutor Van Zeeks is trying to bring this trial to a hasty end. I'll do whatever it takes to keep that from happening. Now, defense, resume your closing argument. Yes, my lord. Okay, who should I press next? Should mix up with that old man the code. I'll, that's cool. I, I really like this. This is a neat system. Merce Jap has already said it himself. But look, I don't even care. Just get this over with. I'm ready for the verdict. What's with your attitude? A man's life is on the line here. Shot it. If I don't get to work, Pearl to. It'll be my life on the line. Uh? A fancy pants lawyer like you wouldn't get it. I'll do manual labor, and I get paid by the day. If I take so much as one day off, I won't be able to feed my wife and kid. Got it? Y yeah? It sounds tough. Every day. I show up at the guild and they give me a job. First come, first serve. Lately, all the underground water and gas pipes have been eruption, see? I'm paying peanuts to work till morning, morning till night, digging up rooms and fixing pipes. Then, does that mean you were digging on the day of the crime as well? Of course I was. Huh, come to think of it, that day I was working in the neighborhood where that musty old bookshop is. What? Could this be it? Oh, uh, maybe this is not, it's gonna it be he couldn't have gone that way because there was like, Work being done. Yeah, let me think. Mersham Road was the name, I think. Mersham Road. Road. That's the one. The road of the restless map. Juror five, please change your juror's initial find to that statement. How about you just wrap up this whole game instead? Please, I'm begging you. <sighs> fine, fine. I'll do it. I was digging up Mersham Road all day when that lady got stabbed. Okay. Here we go. There's a clear contradiction between these two statements! What contradiction? Explain yourself. Hey, hey, why is he pointing at me? Uh, uh, what now? Hurry up and let get this over with. <laughs> I'm flexing my arms. Everyday arm day for Juror 5. Juror 3, might have a word with you. Uh, oh, so, what is it? It's an important fact in Juror five statement. Here, let's compare what was said with the map. On the day of the crime, Suseki bought books at this used bookshop. Now, on this day, Mirsham Road was being dug up due to construction. In other words, the defendant would not have been able to travel this road to return home. Oh, why? Well, you're right! What do you say to that, Joe Five? What? Um, well, I guess it's right. There were the bricks of the road were smashed and the road was dug up about two yards across. Those hoity toity ladies and gentlemen took the wrong way around instead. Then that means, in order to get back to this flat, the defendant would have been forced to take the long way. So it would seem. Does it really? Juror 3, you said the following. There's no reason he would have taken such a long route home. But now you see, we have just established that he had ample reason to do so. Oh, you're right! Oh, well, my lord, may I have a word? Yes, what is, what is it? Perhaps I have been a bit tasty in my decision. 
I think that we should continue this trial a little longer. Huzzah! Yoink. What are you waiting for, Jar 5? Uh, 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 me? me? Uh, fine then. I dug up this hole, and I'm gonna feel it. Yoink! The jury's verdict has changed the result of the defense's closing argument. Now, two vo go vote guilty, and four vote not guilty. Thus, the court acknowledges that the jury's vote is split. And orders you all to continue the trial. Higiari. Mmm. Delicious. Mm. How impudent of me to sip this holy grail after raising an objection in these halls of justice. And then go on to shatter it to pieces. I plead for your forgiveness. Oh god, I got up here fast. Prosecutor Van Zeeks? I suppose I must revoke my earlier words. What are you talking about? The jurors lined up over there cannot be called wise by any stretch of the imagination. How can they be wise when they have fallen so readily for a chap's cheap deceptions? Uh, uh. What's that supposed to mean? What deception? Everything I said was fact! On the day of the crime, that large man was repairing the road. Correct. According to him, a two-yard wide section of road had been removed for construction. D damn right! I worked myself to the bone that day! I got only five shillings for it! So, Japanese exchange student, do you know roughly how long two yards would be? Huh? Well, I'd say... To be honest, I have no clue. <laughs> That's not very far. Seems that two yards is just under the length of two meters. Just under two meters? That's shorter than I thought. As such, one would be able to leap across the missing road. Does the man himself disagree? Uh, uh, um, not. That sounds about right. What? And during construction, did you seal off the road in order to prevent passage? No, no of course we did. With a hole in the road this big, all stuck up ladies and gents would just take a detour. But the inner city kids wouldn't have given a hoot. They just jump over it. As far as I can see, the defendant is neither lady nor gentleman. It's natural to assume that he could make a two-yard leap to return home. Ah! Is that true? And remember, the defendant dropped his books at the crime scene. There is absolutely no doubt that he passed through the Briar Road on his way home. Gah! He's got a point. And you, old man. Uh, me? On the day of the crime, around five o'clock, you had fallen over on Calabash Road. At the time, did you notice any suspicious Japanese figures behind you? Well, who knows? I can't say I remember. You don't remember? Feel free to bet it on all it all on this argument, attorney. Do you think the person that defendant saw was this old man? You have no way of proving it. Gah! Hey, shot that shit down fast. Order, order, Sir Van Zix, if I may. What is it, my lord? If you had such a persuasive argument, why did you stand and watch in silence during the closing argument? Ha! Huh. Obviously, our beloved exchange student is still seeing the sights. What would be more fitting than the sight of how fickle the jurors' hearts can be? Gah! But I suppose that's enough hospitality. Hmm. Behold, oh, that keeps coming off! This is the end of your London sightseeing for today, attorney. What are you saying now? My lord. The prosecution requests that the next witness be brought to the stand. Of course, bailiff! Bring the witness to the courtroom. The next witness is... Narahoda! We've heard about a witness to the... About, it is the crime scene a few a few times now. Yeah, I think they said it was an officer from Scotland Yard. One of the next witnesses must be that officer. No matter who the witness, no matter what the testimony, I will continue to believe in you, Seki. Okay.
keep believing in you to the very end of this battle. Oh my god. Oh my god, we've got some interesting characters here, but you know what? I think we're gonna have to end that for- I'm gonna think we're gonna have to end things here for now, guys. It's off to a good start, though. I'm already really liking this. Definitely no clue about who the possible killer could be. I don't know if we've seen them yet. If it's gonna be one of those guys we saw earlier, who are yelling at each other in the street, or what exactly, but... Could be that crazy jester guy. P probably is, actually. But these these aren't actually the two witnesses. The, the, I thought they would end up being the witnesses, but they actually aren't. It's, it's somebody else, so... I don't know. Maybe it'll come into play later on, but, um... But anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite, and subscribe if you're not ready to be Penguin. For this LP, where the days are always sunny, and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy!